Hello, sweetheart. Hi, Vesa. How are you? I'm good. Good, good, good. good. <laughs> you look very rested. Since last time we spoke, you look like a bit on holiday. Oh, I wish. I wish. It's, I know. It, it's all smoke and mirrors, you know. Like I never kiss and tell my secrets, but you know. <laughs> I let's just, let's just say that it's not all natural. Um, okay, so before before we get started, I'm just gonna. Uh, a quick, quick, quick shout out. People are still joining in, uh, but this is for yeah. all of you, all of you people who are gonna come back and see uh, the show later. Um, today was supposed to be Milan Breton. Uh, we had to reschedule with him to uh, last minute work commitments, but you guys will see him very soon. As soon as we get some space, there's a lot of people who are booked uh, to be on this show. But nevertheless, I am welcoming Valeria Alexandrova from 100 Showroom, the founder of, uh, who was supposed to be my guest for Thursday. But uh, yes, yeah, so I'm not ready. So I'm not ready. <laughs> so, so because because the the internet god was good, I got you already today. Yeah. For for everybody, everybody's um, pleasure. So today. We are gonna kick off the 14th episode of Morse Code's by Vesa. If, every, if, if anyone doesn't know who I am, I am Vesa from Finland, fashion stylist, art director, probably halfway bored of my face already. But now I would like you to tell who are you, what you do, and tell me about 100 Showroom. Sure, well, it's a long story, you know, I have a lot of years behind my. <laughs> <laughs> <Don't> we all. <laughs> yes. But well, the, originally I'm actually from Estonia, so not far away from Vesa. We always chat about it, and I love it when Vesa comes and visits our showroom. We like end up, you know, doing a one-hour Morse code. <laughs> I love, <laughs> I love, I love it. Estonia so much. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're missing it. We're missing the cold weather and everything. But <laughs> yeah, so I've been in UK from. Oh gosh, I arrived here, I think I was like 21 or something. It was like my birthday is 10th of August and I took a play on like 11th. So like as soon as I was 21, I, I'd gone. Came to UK and that was, gosh, like 2002 or something. So I've been here for wow. ages. Yes, yes. So I've, uh, well, I came here originally for like university. So I've, I've done that. I had to do like a foundation degree and then a proper degree. I graduated in uh, film directing. Wow. Um, so I like organizing things and planning and pre-planning and visualizing and planning. I'm quite, I can, I mean, I'm proud of it. I'm quite good with that. So I can wear kind of creative and like, uh, you know, <laughs> logistic. Analytical. I'm, I'm the Analytical, same. yes, I'm the same. yes. So what does it take to um, um, achieve that, you know, visuals we all have in our head? Um, and yeah, so was um, in UK since then, worked here and there, uh, you know, Kind of got into fashion by by chance really well in the beginning like i i wanted to study film directing mainly because i wanted to do music videos for mtv of course <laughs> and fashion films for ftv i'm like 90s babe you know i'm 90s same, same, same. <laughs> yeah so it was like you know mtv of course yeah video uh, get the radio star yeah. yes yes so kind of got by chance to um discover um fashion world in a way through the styling and assisting stylists and everything and then obviously it's, sorry my car is going crazy <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> and and uh, got into um styling so from that i learned obviously like you know could see how pr works and what is happening and then you know all this like graduate fashion week started happening as well so it was kind of like a new exciting market and then a few ideas came out from that why i opened um 100 showroom with my husband actually we did it together so he's my oh, partner 
Yeah, I, I didn't even know. I didn't even know that you had a husband. So yeah, so I, I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm learning so many new things about you <laughs> that I didn't know. That's amazing. Um, how how old is um, Hundred Showrooms? Hundred Showroom is like for um, just two years. It's been yeah. It's, yeah, because, because, I, yeah. because I personally remember meeting you for the first yeah. time just after I moved back from Madrid because I went there for a year yeah. and then um, I, re I, I saw that you had started your showroom and then I was, I was like, oh yes, new stuff. <laughs> and then then you you got stuck with me. Yeah. <laughs> you got to get rid of me. I can complain, I can complain. But yes, that, obviously it took um, a year of, uh, I mean, ideas been there before and a year of planning it and pre-planning it and getting in touch with people and kind of like pitching them ideas, what it's going to be. And since we actually opened the door, like found a studio space to move in, uh, it's been like about two years. I mean, now the last last two months has been mental. So I'm like, where are we now? You know, like what, what, what months are we in now? How long have we been in the lockdown? <laughs> but yeah, so it's about two years. Yeah, and if, if anybody like missed, or like we didn't actually, like I didn't even ask, like that uh, you are Morse coding from London, UK at the moment, is this correct? Or, yes. have, you, or have you escapated somewhere? <laughs> no, 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 I'm, I'm in here, I'm in here, Club Home Common. <laughs> yeah, so, so I've already uh, also, also pinned um, about section from um, Hundred showroom on the comments. So, if if you feel like you want to go have a browse, there it is. Um, okay, let's crack on to the whole COVID nineteen pandemic hell that uh, we've all had to endure. Uh, how has this affected you and your business professionally? You know, I'm um, I'm very like positive and optimistic person, like. You could, I don't know, sit in the corner and cry because, like, our business as a show, country showroom, and our like idea is, uh, you know, we have to be in the show studio because what we do is we work with the designers and samples. We're trying to, um, you know, organize events with them, pop ups, and also one of the main things is to work with the stylists. So uh, designers have a press; they, you know, we can work on different collaborations and so on. So this is like the main part of it, and obviously that kind of was disabled for now for us. So, yeah. um, but what do we do? What do we do, you know? So you just have to stay like optimistic. So what we did kind of, it was, I think on the second week or so, we started um, our like takeover festival. So we're inviting our designers to kind of uh, reintroduce themselves on our platform. You know, it's a simple thing, Instagram, um, and they could show whatever they want. If they want to bake a cake, you know, do the gardening or do something more about their brand, it was up to them. Just not to stay kind of like, um, you know, lamenting, oh my God, the new collections are in a showroom, which they are, like intact, still still there, you know. Um, pretty much, um, I would say 70% of it hasn't been used yet. And we're pretty much going now. I mean, June is different. It's more like men's fashion week supposed to be originally, but then, you know, we're losing two months on all this like press and collaborations. Um, but then again, we, we, we took this time and uh, reintroduced all the brands, you know, and like let them tell their story again and again, because for up and coming designers and small brands, it's quite important to, you know, to keep visibility and um, they should really talk about themselves as much as they can. Yeah. There's, there's, no, there's no such a thing. Well, I've already done it. Like, well, you know, we all have such a small, as in the beginning, amount of even like followers, let's say on Instagram and other social media. So it's just like, so what? You know, keep keep saying your story. Keep yeah, you have, what you're doing. You have to start yeah. somewhere. Uh, I even had the, the honor to be uh, one of your guests in one of your episodes. Yes. Which, which you can go and um, check in. Um, in a hundred showroom IGTV, I will be uploading the episode where, where my nonsense is featured. So uh, you will get like a cross promotion on that. Uh, but yeah, you're absolutely right. I, to be honest, I think that the whole landscape now is changing back into what it was in the golden nineties. You know that personality is the key. Yes. Because yes. because I, I think no nobody is interested about about the sort of BS that has also surfaced to this uh, COVID-19 thing, like the re recent one that I just saw about ASOS, how they've created this NHS healthcare t-shirt 
even while doing the worst part, they forced their workers to go and work. Go, in the yep. Being like completely that sort of, um, you know, uh, what is the word? completely hypocrite about it just to make profit so I, I i think we as people and as consumers we kind of we're more woke about a lot of things that goes behind the scenes and we don't buy into this sort of crap anymore which is great so yeah. more more independence more personality i'm here all for it um yeah. how are you I'm, I'm good, as I was saying, so I'm quite, uh, you know, a part of uh, all this is actually very sad what is happening, you know, with the pandemic, but like from my personal kind of my space and how it is, it's kind of gave me a bit of a kind of like break a bit mentally, just not to rush. I, I'm achieving much more because usually, you know, you do like a list and if you make at least like half of it during the day, you're like winning. But because obviously I'm not spending time for like even traveling to work or anything so i can achieve much more so i'm uh, again i'm taking it quite positively and yeah well obviously you have sometimes your moments like you know bored and things like that and it seems like the week been like a month but it's only been a week if you look at a calendar it's it's only yeah. been a few months so it's not as dramatic yet so you, you just have to find your positive things from it and again there's a lot of um as i was saying that's what i was saying 70 percent of collections being untouched because <laughs> Um, when it's like lockdown was announced, I managed to take partly some of the collection home with me. So I'm curating it to usually models or stylists. So they're doing like a digital shoot, which has been kind of the new way as well. And it's quite exciting. I hope it will also stay and carry on because it's not only about like social distancing and stuff, but in the future we can in a way work with it maybe, you know, when you work with a totally international team and you want to you don't know those people, it doesn't mean you need to fly to like Portugal or if the model is somewhere else, you know, you can um, send a collection and work for that. Like, why not? That's kind of also yeah, I think, a bit of sustainable. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I think that there's definitely something there. Of course, you know, you know, for in our industry, the sort of traveling part is also fun. You know, it's kind of nice that, ah, yeah. oh, yes, I got a booking here. Like I get to go there. But in, in certain cases, I think it's it, it's quite clever that uh, I'm sure that the innovation is is brewing down there and something is going to come out of it just as a new tool that yes. is going to be beneficial. So hopefully we will find somewhere like a nice middle ground with yes. everything. So I think I think the key is not excess on anything. Hmm. Big like a, a little bit of there, a little bit of here. Because a bit of here. I, and there. Yeah, yeah. Because I I wouldn't personally <coughs> want to do all the like digitalized shoes because like then i would be like like fuck it i'll do something else <laughs> no, no it's good it's good to mix but i think um we had this discussion recently as well with some some people around on the social media about like well but everyone is doing this now it's like well but what another option do we have and if we still want to be creative when we have you know some people don't get it it's like it's all about visual you know you've seen the garment and you like visualize it how it could be you, you do want to do it why to wait? You can you can do it now, but this kind of conversation about like oh, everyone is doing it now, oh, it's not that cool anymore. It's been only like two months. How how quick we get tired of things? No, but, like yeah, what? but, I, but I think you know? also like what is, what is, what is the definition of cool? Yeah, this, like, this is my this is the biggest big question. What is cool? Exactly, and then you know we we have been doing like in a classical way of it shows and editorials like forever, you know, different styles, and some of them better than others, or some of them bad, some of them good. It's all about like creativity and everything. But we've been using this like you know classical media for ever and ever. So this is still not boring. Why? Right? It's like you know. So in a way, um, I can feel some kind of um, snobbism going toward this as well. Kind of like oh, everyone is doing it now. Well. Give us another suggestion. What else? Why? Why not? You know. And... No, but, yeah, but, but but I think that's that's the sort of thing. That, like a lot of these sort of like what I call the cool kids or the purest or whatever who think they, there's a lot of people in our industry who think that they're better than uh, somebody else for X, Y, and reason why. Whether they're in certain yep. groups, come from a certain school, work for a certain company, or so and so forth. The reality is that those people are not the creators. They are not the innovators because the innovators are always the ones. You know, we would not have electricity unless certain person would have got a crazy idea to go run with a kite yes. and a couple of things and get, go chase 
some lightnings. How many people told that person that he's crazy? Or, you know, the list goes on. Those yeah. are the, those are the innovators. The innovators, like, they are there to be the yeah. test dummies, where then these cool kids come and adapt their ways and say, like, oh, I have a narrative here. Exactly, yeah. No. I mean, it's quite, it's quite cool to go, like, fair enough you might like something might not you know you, you're allowed to criticize but then like you know try it yourself do something creative rather than just being like yeah. oh, that's not my thing anymore i don't, I don't want to do this i don't want to do that i don't want to do this what do you want to do I yeah because, because, because I, I think the key is like whatever it is whether it's like just for yourself learn a new skill learn start learning a language something that you can you can do better than to stare at your wall or your cell yeah. phone and complain and how things like just like prepare yourself to be ready for the moment when the lockdown is lifted because <laughs> because there are the people like us who keep the ball rolling and it's when they say okay green light go what are we gonna do we're gonna run and like yeah, yeah. we are fully equipped and then all of these people are still collecting their shit and it's like oh what what where's school where, where we need to go <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, be, and that's what I mean. It's like I think the future is for all of us. Like I, I would see even for, for example, makeup artists. I would uh, encourage everybody like learn how to Photoshop, learn how to do digital makeup. For example, that like a great makeup artist called uh, Andrew Gallimore has been posting mm -hmm. on Instagram like these amazing digital yeah. makeup uh, images that he's created like digitally, which are equally as amazing as his work when he paints it on the models. So I think this is the innovation. It's like broaden your skill set. Yeah, and be open, open minded, you know, it's my exactly. it's point become all. But for now, we, we can't say, oh, digital shoots like are not cool anymore. It's been like two months that pretty much we started doing them. Kind of like, you know, the first was like Vogue Italia, then Jack Moose did his lookbook like that. Why, why not to try? I'm like open minded for it. But that's kind of, um, um, <laughs> Also, the part of uh, 100 showroom motto, it's about also trying everything new because, uh, and, and actually that's the idea behind it, we work with designers, either recent graduate or brands, that it doesn't, you don't need to go to universities, like, you know, this, if you want to create your collection, you know, <laughs> don't be like, well, you didn't go to Central Society. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, um, yeah, with, with young brands, um, recent graduate designers, and it's all about actually, Kind of like we work together as a community so we're learning one from another on our experiences like for example somebody did a presentation what was the outcome of it someone did maybe a catwalk show someone went to paris uh, you know showroom so we try to share our experience like was it worse or was it not because that's the thing when you come out of university yes you somewhat equipped with um you know thinking creatively how to design your thing you can make it not even some like from all universities you learn how to like totally make your garment but still you you can create it but but that's it you know there is another aspect of if you're really th serious about like building your brand and it's not going to be like you know we don't have any more these dream stories of like john galliano alexander mcqueen it's not no. this is not happening this is you know arts history fashion history it's great to learn this but there won't be such brands anymore for example as chanel or dior because they were born in another time they yeah, have more, they have, you know what I mean? It's, yes, you can apply for like, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, aspiring to be that brand, so I'm going to follow this kind of steps. No, you have to adapt to the new, new ways of, of, of doing things, you know? And the fact is, like, when you go, for example, to Graduate Fashion Week, I'm not exaggerating, it's thousands, thousands, not thousands of students who graduated from fashion. Beautiful collections, you know, like 50% of it, you're like, oh my God, it's beautiful, but do we have space for so many designers like it's annually annually this kind of, do we have yeah. no so what what takes people to you know what i mean to achieve what they want it's um it's a stamina it's uh, you know work ethic work ethic and personality it's still a personality like again we're talking about like you know <laughs> alexander mcqueen john Galliano. yes personality but it's about um um you know, you, you almost have to have this, like, full package. Yeah. I'm not saying everybody wants to have their own brand. You might want to, you know, I want to work in fashion and I want to work maybe, you know, for a Victoria Beckham team, so it's fine as well. But if you want to create your brand, it's not enough just to go to university. And if you don't have, like, financial background as well, so what is your asset? Your asset is time. 
you, you don't have now to invest thousands thousands of pounds straight away to like launch your career, you know, launch your um, collection, do the amazing catwalk show, you know, participate in um, certain programs maybe with the British Fashion Council. It's it's a time, so you you have to be doing it slowly, in a clever way, maybe smaller collection, maybe reaching straight away to customers. So it's a lot of aspects around it. That's why we work as well on a freelance basis with Sylvia. You know, Sylvia yeah. from. She's Sylvia, advising who is about, my, my guest. Yes, yes. She's advising few of our designers on more like a business plan as well and um, and the brand structure such. And we think great results, but it does take time because we don't have money for it. So that's that's how it works out. And also the most important because I know, um, I mean, there are a few PRs. We we're not competitors at all. We more like on a friendly basis and always, you know, if the garments get lost, you call them like somebody yeah. returning to you. <laughs> somebody returning to you. It, it, it happens. So, um, uh, but mostly the PRs they do, uh, yeah, it's about press. It's about working with stylists and everything. We think, we believe it's important for designers to learn without the support of big universities. I mean, how do you plan your, or what does it take to do a presentation or a catwalk show, you know, even money-wise, it's not, yeah. it's expensive. How, how do you kind of sort it out? Or pop-up, pop-ups are important as well, because you see, it's actually people like, are they, not even buying them, but people, do they try your garments? Is they actually in need for your design in this world? Do people yeah. even, like try it on? And if they're buying it, it's like, congratulations, kind of make, makes you feel like, yeah, definitely, it's like worth it, whatever. And it's a part of the research, you know, you, you have to do all of these things if you like a young brand. And that's what kind of we facilitate. So we um, do usually either pop up for every season or like a catwalk show and or a presentation and so and so. And the way we work with it is kind of like, this is a boring financial part, but we work literally with just like all with designers, whoever participating, just share the cost. So it's not nothing yeah. like oh, it's going to cost 10,000 and you know, it's not. And no, because we work with a very small team, we usually get um, interns for that time. Everyone get paid for their time, but we work on a very small like nuclear team. And that's why we like when our designers are active and they're also doing something because they're part of hand showroom. It's not like we have an office and people and we go around them like, oh, you know, fluffing around. No, they have to work hard as well. That's they great. That's so, it's so funny because I was just about to ask you before, uh, I was about to ask you what makes a uh, hundred showroom designer, but you just literally summed it up yeah. like <laughs> perfectly it, it, even before I even got to the question. Um, I totally, I totally uh, love that, uh, that idea because uh, I am, I am self-taught. Of course I have a um, background in <laughs> academy and I know, I know from like firsthand experience from being a aspiring dancer and then being enrolled, you know, as a as a as a, um, as a kid who loves to dance, just loves to dance, and then you're enrolled into a academy, which in this case was the the Finnish National Ballet Opera's, you know, ballet school, and then you realize that what is the the hierarchy and the business behind it, and how quickly that education destroys the creativity in you yeah so so i it's 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 a very interesting take and most of the 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 best designers in the world are not all from schools i and i always say that academies it depends on what type of uh um type of person you are do how do you learn do you learn by reading do you learn visually do you learn audio visually what is your process so uh, I love the fact that you guys support designers that do not have the quote unquote like the uh, so like so society's approved way of being a X, Y, and Z because I think it's bullshit because you can do whatever if you have the talent. That's that's the reason why I always visit you still because your designers they have flair. There's the feeling. I'm always after the feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm like I'm like Calvin Klein's Eternity. You know the '90s Christy Turlington uh, ad. You know like yeah. you just, it just lingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, you should see the new collections. They're like amazing. I can't wait to reopen it all and stuff. And at yeah, the moment, because... they're all on our website though. They're all released, so you can have a so, look at. But for that, like, um, I wanted to uh, take it more into then 
the sort of factual things of what is happening, especially here in UK. Like the newest, uh, newest news is that the furlough scheme for all of the workers has been extended until October. Yes. What do you think about this? Because I think this is quite, to me personally, this is an indicator about how long us in the yeah. UK are going to have to sit on this cake and this stint yeah. before we can get to normal. Any thoughts on that? Well, if, um, like, I, I've seen that news as well, and if, uh, you know, worse come to worse, and for example, like, our type of business, which is not, like, an insane show, would be, uh, I don't know, literally close until September or October, um, we'll brainstorm and we'll find a way. I mean, probably just the fact, again, being, like, very, like, you know, like, uh, simple facts, like, we won't be able to run our studio, so I'll probably pack it up in some storage space, lock it for some time, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And and go from that. But it doesn't mean, because again, we kind of also encourage our designers, like you don't need to produce a you know, collection every season. You don't, you don't need to, you can, you know what I mean? You can update it, you can go like slow and whatever. And I think that's what's going to be happening. So again, there would be opportunities then what we'll do reopen to probably unfortunately sell this as a samples in, um, in the pop-ups and everything to kind of gain get some cash to to create yeah. collections again maybe few items can be reworked we already work on that basis with few of our designers so they might um you know update and rework and just add up a few things in there because the collections again some of them being seniors in paris showrooms um and obviously they're all the way our website but i don't think it's that kind of um hype anymore kind of like oh it's the last season it's it's not you know yeah, no. the, we can still like work with it and usually it happens as well like from, you know, PR hat, what, what is happening is, uh, as we know, yes, autumn winter collections being released in the summer and summer collection being released in autumn, but due to all the weather conditions, still there's a lot of people that ask to shoot, you know, summer collection and summer autumn collections on, in autumn. That's why sometimes we have both collections, like previous one yeah. and current in, because people, people can ask for both. I know it depends on the magazine, what they want to issue, but still it's happening. So, I mean, we'll find a way out of the situation. Yeah, definitely. I think, I think I think it's it's completely doable. I've never understood this type of thing that oh we can't use that or oh, this you use like old season piece. And I was like, who gives a toss? Isn't this if it's about, good? It's good. It, yeah. You know, like who says that it's it has to be this way? The designer should have allowed to have that sort of transitional period yeah. of couple of months between, just the same way as any type of big uh, high street retailer does companies such as Zara, they have overlapping collections yeah. throughout the year. So why why wouldn't this be allowed to happen? Yeah, yeah, that's not that's that's not a problem. Yeah, and, so, and, I, th and I think it should be encouraged for yeah. for for this type of thing to happen. But to be honest, I think it's it's just like for us it's a matter of months that they've already said that people can who can't work from home you can go to work. Uh, if 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 it's going to be allowed that we can sit in the parks with ten people drinking wine, why the hell wouldn't I be exactly. able to come and exactly. walk into your showroom? So I'm the sure only I... thing again, it's like you can't use the public transport. I mean, they don't have bus, so <laughs> I can cycle or anything like that. <laughs> well, we'll see, we'll see. But I think it's just like a precaution, probably, to see. Yeah, just to, um, be, just to be cautious. So, yeah. what, what did you say to your designers when the lockdown actually fully realized? When you realized, like, oh shit, <laughs> is this gonna be a long time? Yeah, it's gonna be a long time. So, um, we take it one month at a time. So, we knew, for example, yes, so pretty much for April, it's gonna be a lockdown. Okay, so let's be in a lockdown and let's plan for, you know, our takeover festivals and whatever we're doing. It's not, it's not a year, it's just a month. So we'll see how it it's will be going. Plus, we're still working. Um, as I was saying, some uh, some designers producing like little capsule collections for they wanted to do for um, summertime to sell on the pop-ups and through the um, you know e-commerce websites. Uh, so we we're still working on it because again, e-commerce will still be working and yeah, the sure. measures will be like um, open up a bit. We, we can walk, you know go out or something there. Um, you know, you just shouldn't stop doing whatever you were doing before. Yeah, I, Maybe I, I think that everything is just going to be in a smaller scale, exactly. like, it, like it used to be. So I, I think now 
we're gonna get rid of all of the goddamn circus around everything, which I'm all for. You know, I'm all for going back to, you know, just a, yes. you know, couple of people team. You do magic. You do your stuff. You have your time to finish your work before somebody's screaming at you on the same day. We need yeah. the images. So I'm all for it. I'm totally yep. all for it. Um, <laughs> where, where do you see PR going as an industry in the near future? I'm sure like eventually we're going to get back more or less back to normal, but for now, for the foreseeable future. I think, uh, I mean, I can't talk about like the, the PR and its classical kind of fame, the classical point of view, because yeah. they, they, will, they will always kind of like exist because uh, obviously the work could be on a different scale, such such like Carlo Otto, for example, or Lobby because, um, you know, they have a different customer with a different budget. And, um, but that's the whole thing. You need to, you know, magazines exist and that's the way to um, show off your collections and celebrities. So we will always need a stylist and photographer. So therefore it will work out. However, from, for example, Henry Shorm, as I was saying, is not really in a classical point of view of PR, PR, because we're also doing some other things. So um, obviously it's in the lockdown gave me a lot of time to think about like a new thing <laughs> and so on so we are working quite hard on um, possibly for september so kind of to organize i don't know how it's still gonna be because i want to see uh, what british fashion council would do because they're doing in june now totally digital thing i know kind of people the the agency that will be working with obviously it's like a next level is super super creative but still what can we do with what we have because that's the thing when you don't have again certain budgets and everything uh, but you have an idea you kind of almost you do have to compromise but not in a way of uh, making it look bad no be creative how you can still make it you know what I mean yeah how you can still make it like value oh, I know but for, know. <laughs> for the budget that you have doesn't mean you should stop creating so we'll see I'm really into uh, brainstorming now and looking at the possibilities to do kind of like a VR showroom as well. Yeah. Not only for, um, it won't be for samples as such, because samples you come and borrow, it will be the same, but we are looking into expanding into a sales showroom as well. Uh, wow. It's been planned like, going on like, for a long time. like a fusion. Yeah, it's been planned going on for a long time, for September, so we've been a few times to do our research and so on, but with how it's happening now, why not to do something different? So we want to do something like that. But it would be against something totally fun, probably MTV 90 style, you know, QVC rooms, something like that. Something yeah, fun. We want to do something crazy. super creative. Yeah. I, I think that that's the sort of sort of key. But uh, I always say that I'm very blessed that I got to live through that time when you don't have access to everything so easily. It's like information was in books, it was in libraries. You had to go and play that sort of treasure hunt or you didn't have money, you would have to customize things. You have to do whatever it took for you to achieve something what you wanted as a, okay. as a kid back in the day, gave us the tools to do all of this while I, all the other ones are like, what is going on? Like my internet is not working. And then you're like, okay, bye. <laughs> you know? So it's it's great. I'm very looking forward to uh, see what is coming from you. Uh, quickly, we are just about like uh, over half time, guys. You see, like I'm sure, like I've received a lot of pre questions and questions just prior to the show. Send everything. Do you see the question mark box somewhere in the middle of the screen? Like zoot, shoot or everything there because I will be asking all of those questions from Valeria from you guys in in a little moment. Um, uh, could you tell me now? Obviously, it's, it's a bit of a silly question, but what is the most difficult aspect in your work now versus what it was before, or is it if more difficult in sort of sense? Do you know what I mean? Well, it's um. It's, it's not more difficult, it's just like certain things become not, no, how to say, not even impossible, but they're just not um, like viable anymore. Again, like alone in samples, as I was saying, we, we are doing this, but it's like a percentage of shoots dropped. Yes, people doing it digitally and so on, but it's like dropped significantly. But it's something that, you know, comes with the lockdown, there's nothing we can do about. But as I was saying, as a communication wise, that what we do, you know, like 
emailing back and forward with stylists and magazines and so it's actually um, become easier now because everybody works from home. Everybody's more calm. Everybody's nice. I like oh, for real. Yes. Yeah, and everybody's <laughs> actually general. responding, yeah. which is yeah. yes, which is responding straight answer. away. This is like amazing. And um, as I was saying, so the, the, this kind of um, um, you know reaching out and, and everything that's what we're doing brought us as well. I want to mention um, another great project that we're doing. Uh, it's pretty. It's going to be launched properly in June, probably during the fashion week but it started with high fashion talk group initiative um they have started it and we kind of like jump on board and then cobbled magazine jump on board <laughs> and a few another uh, great people we have um great stylists from brazil suyani naya she's like celebrity stylist and this it's it's a very interesting project and it's again it's for the graduates because as we know they won't have a show potentially at all and they won't be able to finish their collections which uh, we're kind of saying like, don't finish your collection, show us what you have, which comes again back to the personality. If you have yeah. one, one look or if you have a great sketch, okay. But it cannot be kind of like lazy, boring thing. Okay, here's yeah, the Instagram, my sketch No, make it some interesting, you know, I don't know. But is there, is there like some like sort of like- Like do interview, talk about it or something. Is there, is there some sort of like application process for, for or you want to look out for the next cool, innovative, young designer? How does it work? Yes, it would be, um, I mean, everybody can apply from, you know, class 2020, whoever is graduating now and who wants to participate, everybody can apply. It's going to be properly released uh, in the near future. We're just like finalizing all the, you know, press release and ma ma materials for that. And uh, everybody can uh, participate. Uh, as we're saying again, it has to be cool content. <laughs> it's mostly about like personality, but also like you know, we fashion, we fashion, fashion design. Um, and the prices, prices will be so there would be a potential feature in a cardboard magazine, and also collaboration with a certain potentially like digital brands and so on. And also as a hundred showroom, we will offer them six months of. Um, being on our board and we will work with that brand and oh, that's that's so, really lovely really really yeah lovely. so people just need to you know apply and create some kind of cool content same similar things what people did for um for takeover festival yeah yeah something exciting something that people can learn also about them as a designer not only pretty picture you know yeah so what do you see as a positive in business wise for you um, you talk, you're talking about like what? In, in no, like, like, let me to the I just heard like the ambulance. <laughs> um, what, what do you, uh, what do you see as the positives in all of this, like, uh, horrible things that have been going around and still going around us? What do you see as the positive for you as on a personal level? And is there any positives professionally that you see happening for you? or as a whole, as a, as a globe, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a long question. Personally, yes, because it's gave uh, this, you know, precious extra time that we never have, that we always rush here and there. So it's kind of like, told us like, come down, you know, come down. And it gave us a time to rethink a lot of, uh, also, for example, as our business plan that we're going, because again, we are very young, two years. So how we will be going forward, um, it will be a bit different, but it will be also some additions here and there. So it's, um, yeah, so far for what we plan and what we're planning to kind of redo, revamp, it's all been positive. But let's see when actually it happens, what will be the results when we're coming out of it. Like, is it yeah, 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 working? Is it like, you know, necessary or not? But so far, like the, you know, the positivity, the energy is there to kind of like, come on, let's do it. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, then this one is my, my last personal questions before we dive into the many, 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 many uh, mm -hmm. questions from the audience. Uh, what is the first thing you are going to do when the lockdown is lifted? Anything. What is the first thing that you crave to do? I do probably like when it's like all lifted, like we're free to go, yeah, have our meal out with friends, you know, catch up to know what they've been up to as well. Yeah. So that's kind of, <laughs> yeah. And potentially travel if it's happy, you know, potentially travel. <laughs> yeah. That's that's the sort of okay. thing. Because so far it's been like what we had too many holidays cancelled, so it's alright. Oh, that's 
I'm, I'm sure like when this lockdown is lifted up because I haven't had a single drink of alcohol since I've been cooped, cooped up even even though I could but I haven't so I'm just like worried about like I have one glass I've got gone <laughs> no I, I'm okay with that I haven't yeah no I've been drinking a lot so it's fine <laughs> well there you go but you know weekend is a weekend why not yeah something okay. to take your mind off um, so let's dive in sorry I'm coming close because I'm half blind as a bat um First question, how do you feel about the lockdown being lifted slightly? In my opinion, I don't think they should uh, should have lifted it uh, dot dot dot, especially as numbers are still growing. So what is your take on that? Well, absolutely. So, you know, many have noticed the message was very vague, no clear message at all. Again, from my personal experience is from Monday. I started having again more and more requests, which is, you know, for the samples. And on my questions, kind of like, uh, are you shooting it, uh, you know, with the distance? How are you doing it and everything? I don't get an answer back, which means people were planning to do it. Uh, yeah, the old fashioned wow. way. And I don't want to be part of it. And as we wow, spoke wow, wow. some of our designers as well, they're very adamant with it. They don't want to, you know what I mean? If it's not done like digitally, distantly, they don't want to take a part in it. So. Of we're kind course, of keeping true right. to it so i do have to question like so how is it going to be happening how is the shoot is going to be happening and you, you, you see there is a bit of um yeah and truth going on there yeah because so i think it's just like facilitated um, you know misunderstanding for people like what exactly the guidelines yeah. what they should do yeah because because i i always say like you know and it's not the nicest thing to say about yeah. us humans but i always say that there are the the small group that leads and then the rest is cattle yeah that you know you kind of like guiding through so i've always said that if there's not like clear advice and lines like if everything is a bit vague then you you can expect a little bit of a vague outcome that because people will find the loopholes to fit that into yeah. and adapt that to their lives so in that sort of sense i feel that it's a bit irresponsible you know because i i do understand it's a difficult situation who the hell is going to know what's going to happen but unless there's some sort of like firmness in this we're going to be like like we're like a boat without sail just going back and forth back and forth um um okay so there's a question just like pia wise how do you clean the the clothes when they get back from shoots well, as I said, we have like really small amount of it, so it's a specific clothes. So, um, washing in a washing machine. Yeah, because like and, uh, like a little tip from from me yeah. as, a, as a professional stylist, you know, if there is uh, any type of stains, makeup, so something like so significant, especially when you see that the if, if you pull a pristine sample, yes. you as a stylist do the favor get it dry clean before the PR even has to ask you and they will love you forever you know yeah. take, take responsibility of if you trash yeah. garment and the thing is we do have a uh, dry cleaners open as well but as a fact i you know i won't be able to afford to take every single garment that doesn't need to be taken there um to the dry cleaners and as one of our designers well bless her she i mean i think her family owns like laundry or something so she taught me certain garments you actually can wash because that's what they do in the dry cleaners anyway they put them into a washing machine on a certain regime so it's fine as soon as they can be steamed after they won't be damaged yeah and certain things like a coat or something more like wool yeah it has to be the dry cleaners yeah uh how did you end up uh, starting um, 100 Showroom? What was the, where did it start? So, where did it start? Uh, exactly. So, I was uh, doing um, uh, assistant styling and styling, and just by going to PRs and seeing what they have in there. And, uh, for example, also seeing, because I had, like, you know, same kind of age group friends who were like fashion graduates and everything. And I was like, where can I find your collections and so on and so on? Like nowhere. And you go and see something that's, you know, in PRs that you can buy, like in Debenham, something like boring, and nothing said. I was like, where are these exciting designs? And then kind of like you learn, you know, just a simple truth, basic truth that uh, 
Bastiaris is like so expensive. Like it's very so if you like graduate designer, you will never be able to afford like the cheapest one, I don't know, six hundred, seven hundred pounds a month, like what well, while you still working somewhere potentially. You know, to yeah. to survive, I don't know, waitressing or whatever, it's fine. But you, you can afford it. So that's kind of the idea was why don't we create more yes, as a showroom but as like a group where all come together. So it's like um, a collective. Yeah, yeah, and it's much more affordable, so everybody can, uh, you know, take part in it. And but for that, again, as I'm saying, we have to work all together because I won't be able to, you know, it's just like few interns and my partner to do everything by itself. So yeah, that's how it's, it's come about. I just seen kind of a little gap in the market, saying, oh. "Well, where are all these well amazing designers? Why are they not?" <laughs> Why are they not in there? Oh, because it's so pricey. Why, why is the price? Because, oh, they work in a big team and they have luxurious, yeah. uh, you know, offices. Well, <laughs> who cares? We don't need that. Let's do it on a smaller scale, smaller group, but we all work hard in it. Yeah. How many designers do you represent currently? About 16. Oh, wow. That's a lot. But the thing is, we work with some designers it's like on a come-and-go basis as well. Some people might just join us for, for example, a pop-up, so they want a bit of push before that. So they'll join us for, you know, three months or six months or well, the same way for the show, and then they kind of like go away. So, but we keep um, in touch with everyone so when they're ready with the next collection, whatever they can come back as well and so on. Oh, so that's great. So you you almost like uh, give sort of tailored custom service to uh, your designers in rather than like on a very classic structure uh, of PR agency as far as I've understood it's it goes by season and then you renew I'm not sure if this is please do correct me if I'm wrong <laughs> but this is the idea that I've realized that the majority of the PRs um, we have a question here about saying so you don't clean the clothes and it is infected then you don't clean it and you let another model wear it seriously um, that's yeah we just said that we do clean them so I just, yeah and and, uh, <laughs> and and it depends on it depends on like I, I think you know well when you shoot clothes at least in in my in my shoots they the clothes are most of the times not more than 15 minutes on on the model and there are samples there are samples that we are like you know the models are clean they don't come i don't know i think if this is if, if this question is now directed to what is fashion pr and clothes in the terms of covid 19. i think uh, that's yeah because, and that's what i my answer to that is i do not know I, I have not done a single shoot with a pr sample during this time so i i i can't really say well, exactly, and that's your, you, we were talking about, like, you were talking about, like, you, obviously, when you see the dirt on them, you dry clean them, yeah. this is the normal time. But I'm going to repeat again, in the, now, when we get the samples back, we either dry clean them or we wash them in the washing machine, because certain silks yeah. and cottons and everything, you can wash it and steam it in the washing machine, that's what yeah. we're doing. And if it's, like, heavier coats and everything, they will be dry clean. That's why we now have only a small amount of yeah. garments in here because I can't, you know, it will cost it's us a possible. fortune as well to, yeah, to do all that. Possible. So we have a small amount that kind of um, work out that way. That's why now if stylists uh, approaching me, that's what I was saying from Monday, it's been, you know, a bit crazy. People look like they're out of the lockdown. And if they now ask me, oh, can I borrow something now for Wednesday? No, this is impossible because it takes me time to get them back from the stylist, sort them out, and then you can, like, we yeah. hurry, you can courier them to you. So, yeah, it's so, a, so the you, you know, now like, it's a bit more slower process. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It's yeah. a bit slower process, but yeah. So it's almost like the supply and demand yeah. chain has uh, tripled the time span in order to be able to sustain. And, and be expenses as well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's the sort of thing. So I think, I think it's 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 great that people are concerned, but most are like I think the 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 biggest issue is also that that the people who are asking we're talking about magazines and uh, so on and so forth. So they are the ones that who also have to start regulating the cycle, how fast because we cannot produce. Of course, we can produce, but if we want to keep it within the safe safe realm and protect us and others, 
you know, this is what we have to do. Okay, we have now reached almost to the end, which means we are going to go to the notorious quick fire round. So how this works? Oh, well, no, I'm not a quick thinker. <laughs> no, this is fun. It's going to be one or the other, both you know, you feel free to answer how you want. It's 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 all of this almost like the sort of yes or no yeah. type of question. So it's nothing serious. This is just a little fun projection of personality and choices. Um, silver or gold? Gold. And I'm wearing silver, but yeah, gold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, commercial or contemporary? Contemporary. Vodka or gin? Vodka. Amazing, same here. I, I think it's the I think it's the Russian influence from like from my fa mother, father, Russia. I, I, like, I can't even tell you the brand. It's Absolute. Yeah. Yeah, Absolute is from Sweden, by the way. Um, uh, street style or editorial style? Editorial. Milk or honey? Neither. <laughs> uh, Mornings or evenings? Mornings. Uh, beach or city uh, holidays? Beach, beach. <laughs> yeah, same here, beach, oh, 100%. Disco or cocktail bar? Disco or? Cocktail bar. Disco. Same. Uh, frills or no frills? Oh, I think both. <laughs> uh, coffee or tea? Tea. Past or the future? Future. Educated in school or educated in life? Uh, both. Cats or dogs? Cats. <laughs> yeah, good ear. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> Just literally said meow. <laughs> <laughs> And then, last question, online or real life? Mm. Yeah, real life. Real life. And that commences the episode 14 of Morse Course by Vesa. Thank, thanks a million. Thank for you. Thank is you. There, nice to chat with you. Is there, is there anything that you would want to tell, just, just as a last last before we say uh bye bye to all of the people i like a little shout out Is there anything? sure sure well i hope you know guys keep safe follow the rules don't rush we all have time for everything like don't rush you know the, it hasn't been so long yet and the the more we stay at home and being safe the faster it will pass and we can all come back to create more and meet and everything so uh, looking forward to those times amen Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for, for. Thank you, darling. See you. Bye. See you. Ciao.